Hi everybody, my name is Tim. Tonight I will build a telescope in my backyard over here to take an image of a galaxy far, far away. Join me this night and become an astro addict. I sure hope that spring finally arrived. The next few days are partly cloudy and maybe I can sneak in some some exposure time on this galaxy. And also there's a half moon rising above me right now. All right, let's build a telescope. Or rather, yeah, put one together. It's actually not that cold anymore, but it will be soon. The first thing you may realize, the guide scope is gone. I really don't know if this setup can work at all. I tried it out many times, in theory, and this is now unbalanced, sadly. There's too much weight at the front, actually, but I can't put this guide scope anymore in the back. We'll see. If the guiding is alright, this is a beautiful method to do it. If you want to set up an imaging plan for a night of astrophotography, most of the times the moon is your biggest enemy. You either have the choice to shoot broadband RGB data, basically just color images of your target, or you have the choice to capture narrowband, just a few emission lines of one target. And as I said, the moon plays a big role in this. My rule of thumb, if the moon is over 50%, it's now about at 50, and if it spans most of the night, I only shoot narrowband. The only problem this night is, yes, it's over 50 and it spans, I think, all of the night, but I still want some good color data on the Pinwheel Galaxy. Yes, the Pole Master is back, but with the ASI Air, I guess I won't need a tool like this to get the pole alignment because it has it in the software. But sometimes I was not quite sure if the pole alignment of the ASI Air actually is that good compared to the Pole Master, which in my opinion is the easiest and best option to polar align. And with this I usually now would bring my laptop out here to do the polar alignment. But I recently stumbled over one new amazing thing. Did you know that the Pole Master has a mobile phone app? We're gonna try that out tonight. If I get some more clear skies in the next few days, I will gather lots of subs on the Pinwheel Galaxy, hopefully. But this first night will be just a test. At first I need to get the collimation right again on this scope, because you saw in the last video of the Whirlpool Galaxy that the stars in the upper right corner did not look right. It couldn't have been a problem with the tilt adapter, because I tried every every <laughs> I tried every possible direction with this thing. It didn't work. So I recalibrated, collimated the RC again. I don't know if my approach is correct. We have many different bird nests around here. That's nice. Guess I'll have to tear this one down again to set up properly. Clear nights. Test night complete. Conclusion? Amazing. The Pole Master app definitely works, but it's still in very early development. Some missing translations, some bugs can be quite confusing if you use the routine for the first time. Let's talk about the collimation of the Ritchie Gretchen telescope. This is not a tutorial on how to collimate an RC. Rather, take it as an entry into the Deep Space Diary. If I say do this and don't do that, it's because I checked many different sources and I recommend you to do the same. A Ricci Gretchen telescope needs a proper adjustment to have sharp stars over the entire field of view. To achieve this you need to adjust both mirrors and optional, or rather not really optional, rather a must, the tilt adapter in the back. If you have a collimation laser, this task will be quite easy. Put the laser into the back of the telescope, but don't tighten the screws too much or the beam will not be parallel. Side note, this laser needs adjustment as well.
If I rotate the laser in the adapter, the point is not supposed to rotate on the target over there. This one is pretty well adjusted. If your laser point rotates, adjust the three screws, which have to be on there somewhere. At first you look into the scope from the front and find the small black circle from the secondary mirror in there. Adjust the main mirror in the back until the laser point is exactly in the center of that small circle. After that you need to adjust the front, the secondary mirror, to redirect the laser point into itself. You may need to do that several times because they will out adjust each other, I don't know how that's called in English. And we are done! Not so fast. I did all of these adjustments without the tilt adapter. And the focuser can be out of alignment as well, that's what the tilting plate is for. I started with the adapter being in complete locked position, with all the screws tightened up to the max. And then I repeated the entire collimation with the tilt plate attached. You may need to repeat all of these steps several times until, with and without the adapter, the laser point is spot on, in the main mirror, the secondary and in the focuser. And when that's done, you need to take the rig outside to test everything on an actual star. But this time we only touch the secondary mirror in the front, not the main mirror in the back and not yet the adapter. On a bright defocused star, you will see if the pattern is symmetrical or not. If not, adjust the secondary until the inner black circle is in the center of the bright one. You can also hold your hand in front of the spider to see which direction the mirror needs to move. During all that time, keep the star in the center of the frame, because it can get deformed at the edges. When the out of focus star looks symmetrical and you focus and see a good looking star, you are done. And I did not adjust the tilt plate any further, simply because I didn't need to. All the stars and all the edges looked good. Finally, if your image shows elongated stars at the edges, adjust the three main axes of the tilt adapter until that's right. And when that's done, get back inside to do another full collimation, because the focuser is now in a different angle to the scope. And all of these three main components need to be aligned to each other. Main, secondary and focuser. All of this sounds like a whole lot of work. That's why this scope dusted about two years in the cellar. But is it worth it?